This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review for Monday, January 2nd. Happy New Year. Um, pretty overly ambitious um, schedule here. I'm just looking at uh, what I had mapped out to discuss, so I'll keep an eye on time and just see how much I can get through. If you are ever curious, by the way, if you're new to me or if you've been watching for a while, some people want to skip ahead or rewind or what have you to segments that interest them more than others maybe and if you look down in the description below I do a list of what's discussed in the order in which it's discussed in so let's jump in so we've been in a period of fairly benign volatility you can see we're in purely directional play here I'm going to uh, zoom in getting a little bit better at this since they kind of played around with the settings um, we stalled at the 200 MA, which is a pretty important um, mark you can see here. This was sort of the lower high bounce. We did, however, break the downtrend here, the cycle, and we're starting to get back up into this above this trend line. So this week is going to be pretty important. I would say if you can get above this, you can see this high here was 1472, and this high here was 1468. I think if we start eclipsing that, We'll pretty quickly come up to 16s and maybe even 17s. If we were to get back below this like 1305, um, I, I think it would be a, this would have sort of been a look above and fail, and we'd probably come back down into range, maybe down to the 11s again. So that's what I'm keeping my eye on in terms of volatility this week. The dollar is starting to show some signs of maybe a little bit of the, uh, the grasshopper lies heavy, for those of you um, Man in the High Castle fans. Um, we had had a multi-day consolidation on this gap up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then a gap down after the close below the 10-day. This has been a really great pattern, by the way. Uh, it's paid out really, really well. Anything closing below 10 days seems to get 20 days pretty quickly. Um I, I also was saying anything below 20s would get 50s. So we'll see how that goes. But we have a nice ham hammer here to play against. The high of which was um, 2646. I think if we were to hold there and get back above that high, it would probably want to levitate higher. This is in UUP terms. Anything below this 2635, I think, could continue to slide some. And you can see where um, we had a uh, consolidation funnel which got into a, a new up channel, and we're kind of testing the uh, the low of that channel. So this gap here is filled, a little little overshoot. So this Friday um, day's range is going to be very, very key. Uh, the DX, which is the dollar futures themselves, are still above these breakout points here near a hundo. Let me zoom in a little more. Right on trend right on this old kind of trend and the 20 ma so also lining up very key if this were to slip look where the 50 ma is it's right where the breakout is and it would be another test of the backside of the old consolidation channel here we had a look back in and fail which went higher and now we're just consolidating as long as we're above this 102 12 really 102s in my view um we could go significantly higher. I've drawn in basically doubling up this range here um, for a projection higher, and that basically takes you to um, 109.32. So if anything holds the 102s, I think we could be in range here for, or move for the 109s. Uh, anything below the 102s to me would mean that we might be in a corrective mode. This here is poor highs, and there's often a back off before the eventual move up. So that's... <coughs> excuse me, what I'm watching. Gold has just been a, a bloody mess. I'm sounding British, right? I'm kind of like Madonna now. I'm trying to sound British. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we held here the 78.6. This seems to be have been bouncing. Mostly what on look like to me are a bit of a retail rally. For this to really gain more legs, um, you'd really need to get back up above this day's high, which was the 110.98. And if you do that, I think you could potentially see this gap fill up to the 50 MA. Um, let me get rid of this fib because it's no longer relevant. Look where this this sort of low was 
where this breakdown took place. This is where I think it could be targeting if there were to be an upward thrust. If you were to lose these two-day lows, then I don't know. Maybe this does want to come back down and revisit the 100 area. Uh, a couple of pieces of loose change. Although relevant, and it would help if I could. Oh boy, let's just start over. GDX, the um, the gold ETF, right? The miners. Um, this did what we talked about in Periscope. I said that there was a little bit more room up to the downtrend line, the 50 MA, and this rejected pretty hard. It was a very harsh uh, move down. It was like a touch and and back down. So you need to break this this kind of reversal bar day is high of day, which was 22.24. If you can do that, then I think we are smooth sailing for a 200 MA test a little bit higher. Um, back below here, below this kind of these two day low of days and the 20 MA, um, this could sink um, maybe even back down and get the 15s. This area to me would be a screaming right or right out buy area, particularly for out of the money puts. But I'm going to use this Friday day range as a, a gauge below the low of day to me as a right or right out short for at least a move down to the 20 MA. Look where this breakdown took place. So I'll tell you this, when moving averages, when stocks or commodities or whatever break down from certain moving averages, the um, getting through and then the retest is sort of healthy. Look here, this is where the 20 MA broke down. Here was a retest. Here it held. Here again, it kind of broke down, was kind of riding it. Here again, the breakdown, here the test. So this is the key, this 20 MA. Above the 20 MA, I think is still kind of okay. Below it, to me, gets rather iffy again. Uh, SLV, this wasn't on the docket, but I did say that I was starting to, um, and I'm drawing trends, that's not what we're looking to do. Um, we are, however, looking to zoom in. I mentioned I was trying to um, nibble a little bit in the um, like the 15s area, and I'd get a little bit more serious in the 14s. Um, a, a move above the 10-day, look where the breakdown here was from. Again, the 10-day. So this area to me is really key. If it can hold the 10-day, I think it's okay. Below to me gets iffy. And iffy to me could mean a move down to these reference lows in 14s, where I would either be buying... SLV shares or selling out of the money puts. In the meantime, uh, 50 MA could be the upward target here. Um, that has also been some points of contention here. So target short term would be 50 MA. If you lose the 10, I think we'd easily see these range lows again and maybe into the 14s. But I think 14s will hold. I don't want to go into my logic for that. It could take a little bit longer than I wanted. But 14s are a big level. TLT. Um, all right, so we, and the royal we here, let me zoom in a little bit more, got into some key levels. This is the uh, the Fed day range here. And said a move below it, I thought would get a quick flush to the trend. But a lot of people have been looking for that. And we got a break of the downtrend here. And now we're starting to test above the Fed day range. Friday's close was 119.13. The Fed day high, though, was 119.21. So it was an inconclusive close. Um, so what do I have to say about that? I think that as long as it holds, look where this 10-day moves above the 10-day have been unsustainable. So we're now a few days above the 10-day. Anything that on a pullback holds the 10-day, I'm still going to keep the long. And below there, I would um, do a GTFO, meaning get out, and maybe there would be a quick move down here. I do think that if rates are going to top, it may happen early in the year. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. HYG not showing any sign of really backing off. Um, this was an inverse head and shoulders setup that I had talked about. This was the check back, and now it's just grinding. So um, 100 MA here seems like a, uh, an important level. You have a 100 and a 20 and the, the 10, the 100 and the 20 all bunched up here. So this is a very big area to, um, to hold. If you can get above this high of day, 86.84, after this kind of grind and consolidate, these double highs, I think it's a very easy shot up to 87s and maybe beyond. If you were to start losing these major moving averages, um, I think you could at least come back down and test this 
sort of swing low and maybe even the 200 MA. The 200 MA here has been very key. Here we didn't spend much time below it. So until the 200 MA though really snaps, I am not even willing to entertain any credit crisis or really fear talk. If we start getting below the 200, maybe we um, get a little bit of an uptick and some more panic. Slash CL, the crude, the oil. Uh, also inverse head and shoulders, and then a mini head and shoulders within that bigger pattern, and that has now failed. Look, we're above that um, head and doing a lot of consolidation. This was the spike on the non-OPEC members staying or you know playing ball quickly taken back. But now look, we're back up here. Um, anything above this 5222, I think has 56s in play. And maybe, just maybe, 62s. So we'll have to see how that plays out. The pattern here is pretty bullish, though. As long as the 10 and 20-day hold, uh, to me, it looks like higher. Look where this kind of, again, lost it from. Then this area kind of held it. So the 20 MA, to me, seems rather key. XLE. Acting okay. Um we're in a bit of a pullback mode. We lost the 10 and the 20, but look where the 50 would be. It would be a, 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 a check back to the consolidation funnel backside. And the initial touch of a backside is, in my view, usually almost always a buy. So anything below um, the 20 and 10, I'm okay with a row row short. Back above it, it's a GTFO, meaning get out of the short. And the target here would be this area where I'd be looking to get long. Um, oddly, that kind of coincides with some of my ExxonMobil worldviews. This was the Tillerson gap and then some continuation, and now we're kind of just consolidating on a 20 MA. So now that we've broken out of this this breakout above 89s, the gap fill there to 89 should be a right or right out buy. And you also have this 87.44. I think that 87s to 89s are what 83s to 86s were to Exxon in the past. And I like the idea. You also have a 200 MA here. I like the idea of buying the 200 MA um, and or using a sell out of the money puts. But Exxon to me looks like here it got you know a little over the channel high. And now it's just consolidating a little bit more by time. So I like the um, channel low as a, uh, a right or right out point. Chevron, since that last quarter, has just been total stud muffin status. Uh, it got into some reference volume. So I think any pullback to the trend here is probably a buy. Uh, my guess is the initial touch of a 50 MA would be a buy, but you can see here we, we it was really sloppy on either side of the 50 MA. The 200 MA though here was the breakdown and multiple tests. We have yet to get a sustainable check back. I would be all over a 200 MA if there was a larger pullback in oil anytime soon. This just seems like it's consolidating. There is nothing to discuss short-wise, in my view, until this can at least break the 20 MA. You can see we already broke the 10-day, but look, the 20 is like right below. If we were to lose the 20, I think it's a pretty quick shot down to the 50, where, like I said, could be a quick right or right out or an out-of-the-money put sale. And I'd probably be targeting the 200 MA. So I'd begin uh, the sell, the put sales here. Um, you know, the out of the money put sales, like probably at whatever the strike is of the 200 or below. And then if we got down to the 200, I would bring it back, start bringing it up more to full size position. FXI is a total mess, Aruski. I have no interest in being long this until it can hold over the 200 MA. Look how many attempts it took, and it finally got it. Now we're back below. So the key here is the 200 MA. If this were to dump again around 32s, which is the 61.8 of this entire range, I'll start selling at the money or out of the money puts, probably at 31, um, what's the low here? 31 strike or below. There's a gap fill at 29, but with premium, it would probably be pretty close. Zibaba. Um, we went from English to French here. Rather interesting, very ecumenical uh, video here. Um, below 200 MA, I don't want to be long. However, you are right into the breakout area. This area, it's the bounce should have been stronger in my view. So um, 
we're kind of holding below the 10 day. I'll keep it simple. If you could get above and, clo and start getting closes above the 200 MA, then I think there could be a move up higher. I would, however, love, and I well, probably won't get it now because I want it, but um, a move down to, I guess we have to move this over now because the time has, has elapsed. But anywhere in this area here, like the 61.8, which is around the 68 level, um, if you want to start selling some out of the money puts now down in this area, I think it's okay, and then maybe bring yourself up to full size below here. But for me, I'd really want to see it get above and hold above the 200 MA. Look here, it was support, and now it's resisting. That's not good. It should have been support. We're below the channel. We're now in a downtrend. And I'm starting to think this could be more of like sell the rips, wait for this to rally up to the trend line, and then short it rather than buying it here. But I do think that this is a key level, and somewhere in between the 68s and like 81s should should hold the baba unless there's some sort of a more severe pullback. And in that case, um, its punishment might have to be more severe for those Dark Knight Rises fans. Um, IBB, this has just been, you know, I, I had talked about the peak earnings situation that I was thinking could be happening in this. And you had hammers here. I talked about a long, a right or right out long. You got it really quickly. It didn't really hold very well, but it did get target. And it's been pulling back, and now it's just kind of below this pullback range. You really need to start getting into a pattern here. You have some higher lows. Maybe we'll draw in a trend. Let's do it. Um, and here, you know, you had a look below and fail, a move back up, and now you're back below, and you're just kind of riding this downtrend. Um, I don't even know what this bar is. It's not really well drawn. Um, let me draw this a little better. You're just basically riding this this line, and that is not, I mean, it's not overly bearish, but it's not really bullish. I don't like that you're below this low, this candle low. This, to me, was a reversal sign, a higher low, and now you're making a lower low after kind of a look above and fail. Um, this, These double bottoms, to me, are a key level. If you lose them, this may want to fill the gap down to the 50 ones again. If you can get above the 200 MA, look where these have all stalled, then I'm down for being long again. So below the 200 MA, I'm all right being either flat or short. It's a little, um, I'd wait for a bounce maybe if you're looking to do the short because it's just come down multiple days. But um, below the 200 MA, I'm not really that interested in being that long. I keep getting asked about Gilead. I don't know why, the stock just acts like dog poop on a daily basis. Um, I had done a 61.8 Fib extension. We've spent so much time close to there. I don't know that this would hold. I liked it because the 50% Fib and this end of this volume distribution is around 70, 69.70. Um, I would love, and I don't know that we'll get this. We have earnings coming up, but if there was some kind of like a larger flush down to the big 61.8 around 57s. Um, this was a big breakout area. I would be into selling some out of the money puts there. You can see there's also a reference low here around 63s. That's where this volume distribution um, takes place. So I'd love some kind of early year shakeout. I don't know that we'll get it. Let me delete some of this nonsense here. We don't need all this this many drawings. Um, 100 MA here though was the is the has been the resistance. So I either want to buy this lower on some kind of flush or on a move back over the 100 MA that sustains. I'll keep it that simple. One I don't discuss very often, but um, hey, I'm in that kind of a mood, is Celgene. Been behaving a lot better than the Gilead. Look, higher lows, higher lows, um, but we are making some lower highs. So um, I'll keep it a little simple with this one. I always like to... Um, a break of the wedge here, I think, fills the triangle up to retest these highs. Uh, you have a 50 MA, 100 MA right below. You could see the 100 MA here was, we we gapped to it, it resisted, and then the 50 in this area were some resistance. Then once we got through it is when we ran. So somewhere in this range, um, it's a little, they've diverged a little bit. But somewhere between the 113s, I think that this low here and the um, 100 MA around the 110 is probably going to, be interesting. You also have the 61.8 and the gap fill right below at 
um, 108.42 and the 200 MA right below, which will probably coincide. So I like the idea of some put ratios, like buying the 50 MA puts and then selling two times out of the money down near the 200 if there's just going to continue down. And then um, maybe if you could get that on for a credit or some kind of small debit, to me it would make sense for a quick, you know, in, in, in kind of near-term options and then just keep putting them on and on again until it, it kind of either gets your move or it breaks the pattern up. But that to me looks okay um, for sell gene. The spy, let's go into spy. So we have a couple of kind of dueling banjos here um, for lack of a bit more thoughtful term. Um, we got the channel high, like I had discussed, and I said this area was important um, to to book profits. Um, I said that the pullback could be begrudging, and it sure has been. Um, SPY had an ex-dividend, so if you go into SPX terms, this pullback really here just started more um, seriously. This was a, a move down to the the Fed day low, which is this day, and then we had a look, bit of a look below and fail, and then Friday kind of came below um, the Fed day low. So I've been saying for a while that I think that the pullback, if we were to get one, look where the 50 MA here was really um, grim death, and once we finally got through it, that's when the rally took off. I think any pullback to the 50 MA is a screaming right or right out buy when, if and when that ever happens. Um, we lost the 10 day, we got the 20, and we're below the 20. Um, Friday's range, there's some. I know everyone's saying, oh, we're below the Fed day range, it's going to be a straight shot down. I don't know that for a couple of reasons. One, I want to go into ES terms for a minute. This is my, uh, this is the war room, right? The grid. And we've been slipping, right? Let me, um, We've been slipping and slipping, you know, kind of this was a consolidation day, and then this Friday move was down. Um, you can see the futures have gapped up. We're um, actually testing right ar around the Fed day low. So we could technically maybe even gap back into range on Monday. We'll have to see how that goes. One thing that had me not necessarily believing this move being anything more than weak holiday kind of selling. I, listen, I know price is truth. And... I have been a little bit more cautious since we've been below the Fed Day, um, Fed Day uh, VWAP, which I had discussed here as a, um, a right or right out short for a move down to the low of range. And then uh, on the Periscope, I had said any break of the low of, of, of day of the Fed was a good right or right out short. And that all worked out fine and dandy. Um, a couple of things that have me suspicious. If you look down here, these are the ticks for the um, New York Stock Exchange. Look at the lows here. Here was this low, and then we were making new lows. The ticks weren't really confirming. And look, this is the minus 1,000 tick range, the, the green bar. We didn't have a single minus 1,000 tick um, all day on Friday, and that's even with this kind of a plunge. So the conviction of the selling, I mean, look at these breath bubbles. These aren't like 5 to 1 and 6 to 1 anything major um, of a big deal. So I'm a little suspicious of the move down. Sometimes text and tone are important. Um, look where the after hour, this was the after hours, um, the gap range for Sunday night. The high was 22.45. So I think you can probably buy stop that if you're looking for a move long. Um, anything below that low, the 22.40.75, though, probably could get a, a bit of a quick gap fill. So what's going to happen this week? I'll tell you this. A lot of people, and, you know, the market, keep in mind, is basically at all-time highs. I'm not seeing the kind of euphoria that you might normally see in the, in the market at all-time highs. I had done a poll, and this was on 12.30, and I asked, will the first week of 2017 be up or down? 54% thought down, 35% thought up, and 11% thought flat. And that was 185 votes. And I had also done a um, another poll. Um, I'm trying to look for the results. But it was, it was kind of similar results. Um, Will the, you know, would the market be up or down in January? And I think most people thought it was going to be down. For some reason, I'm not seeing those poll results. I don't really want to dig around for them. But 
the majority of people have been fairly bearish. So, you know, we're, we had poor highs here in SPY. We're getting a bit of a liquidation break. We're below range. Um, I like the cash here. So anything below 2248.44, I'm okay with being short. Um, you basically look at these highs here or um, double tops. If we were to get back up, like if, if Monday was to be up and we got over these range, I think we'd fly back up to the high end of range really quickly because this to me would have been a look below and fail. And we come back up. If we lose, keep losing Friday's low, I think at the very least we come back in and retest this area. But look, this was the old high and really the breakout. And look where the 50 MA is. Um, I think that, and, and the 100 MA is not that far behind. It'll probably pl be playing catch up soon. So I think that. Um, Somewhere between this 50% fib of this range and the old high of 2193.81, this area also, by the way, a gap fill would be a screaming right or right out um, buy. Or if it happens all like at once, you know, the last few Januarys have been fairly weak early. If this were to happen in like the first week or two, um, maybe even a couple of days, right? I think that there could be a quick. Um, near dated out of the money put sales and I'd probably be targeting those 618 or below for the strikes to sell those out of the money puts. Um, like I said, I think that there could be a little bit of recency bias in the in the market. Everyone thinking, you know, because the last two, three years have been down in January that every January sort of has to be down. Doesn't have to be the case. Um, I like Friday's range is the key. Anything above the high, this 225358, I like long. Anything below the low, like I said, I like short and maybe even down to the 50, um, 50 day MA. I like uh, how would I play that? Either you could do it with straight out put spreads, meaning buy puts and sell out of the money puts, or buy puts, sell two times out of the money puts, um, you know, for a ratio, or buy puts, sell two times out of the money puts, and then buy even lower for the, you know, the 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 butterfly type of a play. So those are the three ways I would like to play the short. And then over the high, over Friday's high, I just like it as a buy stop for a long for a move up. So that's the way I can and will be playing it. Expected move this week in SPY, by the way, is um, three bucks. So if the move was to be up, I think that given where we are in the volatility range, that would probably hold it. That would basically take you up to the high here of um, 20... 226.53, a move down would be to 220.53, which um, could be a little bit further given the fact that the volatility would expand. So I think that the move is either going to be up to these reference highs or a move down to the, uh, the 50 MA for a retest. Um, IWM, and this is also something that has me a little bit cautious for those of you who are like super bearish and want to be short. Um, IWM didn't close below these double lows. It had, if anything, a main, maybe a little bit of a look below and fail. Look at the the lows here were um, basically um, identical here. This was 134.81. Here was 134.81. Here was um, 134.69. So look below and fail. And then here was 134.85. So again, a mini, a mini look below and fail. So again, I, I'll keep it really, really simple. Um, above Friday's high, I like a right or right out long. Below the Friday's low, maybe we start getting some acceleration down. Um, I Again, I, I was very bullish on IWM for a while. I had talked about getting 138s. We got them. I had said that I didn't know that it would be an easy short, and it, it sure hasn't, right? It has been really very choppy and more bull flaggish, if anything. So we're consolidating here really more by time than by price. Um, we are, though, below the 10-day. We are a little bit below the 20. This could just continue to chop for a while. Um, if this were to start getting pulled back-ish, I like um, this was the old high. It's also the channel low. The 50MA is kind of near there. If it takes longer, maybe it gets the channel low here near where this gap fill is. But um, this 134.81, I like that as sort of a bogey. Anything below there to me is more soft. Anything above it is still kind of within uh, okay consolidation range. Expected move this week in IWM is about $2.49. So up would be to 137.34. Down would be 132.36. But given the fact that um, IV would expand, maybe we would come down for the gap fill and maybe, I mean, maybe even get that 50MA test. 
Does like I said, pullback is very normal. This has been a really, really big run. Um, the Qs below the consolidation level, however, right into the 50 and 100 MA, and you have this sort of mini trend line right below. So there could be a little bit more down in Qs, but I don't really know how much more. Uh, we'll have to see if that were if this were to like break. You look, you have this bigger trend line here with a mini, only a little time spent below it, coming up right below near where this reference, um, old reference high is, the 115. So I like the idea of either write or write out, um, write or write out trades here based on the 50 and the 100. Either it's going to hold and be a long or it's going to be a quick short down to this area and it can be done again with spreads, ratios, flies, you name it. Um, we'll see how, I mean, this could chop for a little while. Maybe the 200 comes up and, and coincides with there. That would be a very interesting level to me. Um, the expected move is $1.97, so up to 120.45, down to 116.51. Again, the downside to me would be more um, risky given the point where we are in the volatility range. Apple had a move up to the channel and kind of had a hold here. Uh, here was a hold, a move back up, which was, a, I, I want to say a look above and fail, but it, it basically couldn't get past this one, this gap fill, the head here. And just seems to be drifting a little bit. Um, I don't really want to make too much of it, but I could say this: this could easily pull back to the channel um, area. Look where this um, kind of breakdown and this re this failed retest was at the 50 MA. So you have a 50 and 100 near there. This old breakout here of the 112.39 is right there. So that to me seems like the limited downside somewhere uh, on the channel low, or maybe this breakout if it slips below a bit, but. Below the 10, you know, I think it's the 20. The 20 is 114.58, and that also could be near the channel low. Uh, Apple, to me, looks like it's trying to do better. Uh, I'll tell you why. If you draw this in, this to me here looks like a head and shoulders pattern. And this here was a negation of the right shoulder. And this has come up so high into the head that the pattern is negated. Often there is a retest. It's very possible. But to me, it looks like um, I'll assume that Apple is a buy the dip into the, either this channel low or 50 MA until it is it is not. I had played the long here and um, the breakout, and it, I, I got out. I actually got back in a little bit um, via a risk reversal call spread here, and I'm close to stopping out. Um, I almost did here on the on the breakdown, but anything below these lows here. These um, 115s, I 115 half-ish, let's say, I'd be, uh, I'd probably just take that off for a, a, either a tiny loss or a scratch or whatever it is at the time. I'd have to take a look. It'd probably be a small loss, no big deal. And then I'd revisit it down in this area. Uh, Amazon. So, so many people, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I've, I've seen Amazon is doing really well this holiday season, just anecdotally. I've been seeing package deliveries in my building and other buildings with guys on the street and there's so many Amazon boxes. Um, the, the 50 MA is the key. As long as we're below the 50, the stock remains vulnerable. You do have a 200 MA coming up close to these reference lows. If that were to snap, maybe we finally get a, uh, or, look, I would love a channel low retest. I don't know if and when that will happen, but look, we got above it. We've just been kind of grinding and chopping. Um, this area to me is important. There's a gap fill. Look right where the channel low is at this point. That to me, you know, it, it would be amazing to get. I don't know that we will. I don't know that it, it may take earnings. But if there were to be a steep decline in Amazon, like ahead of their earnings, I think it would be a buy for the earnings. That seems a little easy, but we'll keep it simple. Anything below the 50 MA to me remains either a short or, a, or or stay out. Any closes back above the 50 MA I think could be a long. Look here. Um, support, support, gapped below and resisted, kind of couldn't even get to. Now a look above and fail. 50 MA is the key. So I either want Amazon lower and we could discuss it when we get there or a back above the 50 MA. Facebook, I'm going to just take this into the weekly chart because we've discussed this so much lately. Um, when they reported, they lowered their growth forecast, and that did not jive well with Wall Street. You are below the 50-week MA now. 
um, after multiple holds. This was a look below and fail. Power moved back up, held, now back below. Um, this weekly bar, which was, this was the big kind of range extension bar. This was the failed bounce. Anything to me below this low of day here, the 115.27, and you can see the 117.59, this is starting to kind of mimic or mirror the other side of the mountain. So this could be coming down quite low. Um, I don't know how low. Uh, it's going to really depend on their earnings. If the earnings here are good, I think the stock will probably rocket back up and fill the gap and get back up to the 127s. If these are bad, this stock is not going to behave so gently here. It's going to come down real hard. So this is a really big quarter for Facebook. Um, it needs to get above 124.61. That's the bounce high on this weekly. Anything below 124.61 to me remains vulnerable. Let's get back into the daily for Netflix. Um, of the FANG stocks, this one has been acting, I guess, the best. A um, bit of a double topping action here, but... It's been more of a gentle type of pullback. I think this was just profit taking for the end of the year. 50 MA, I mean, you've had a little look belows and fails, but that has been the support. Um, I think somewhere between the 50 MA and this channel low. Um, the 50 is 122, The uh, or the trend line is like 120-ish. Somewhere in there probably holds. Uh, it seems like Netflix may want to go higher. If you lose this like channel, this trend, Maybe there's some kind of a fill down to 110, but this one's been behaving fairly well. Um, and I think the fifth, somewhere between the 50 and the trend is a good good target if you want to play quick short or to reverse for right around, right out long. Google has just been a very choppy stock of late. Um, lower high here. Um, you had some higher lows, now a lower highs and starting to make lower lows. Um, below the 50 MA, this was key support. Lost it Friday. Um, so you could either buy stop Google over 103.29, which is the high of day, and this kind of high here, these highs, needs to be over 103s um, for me to want to be long. If this continues, uh, it could see the 200 MA, which is down at 771. So keep it that simple. NVIDIA, you've had uh, a very prominent short seller come out and try and pick a top on this. Seems uh, a little cocky, but you do, technicals are, you know, we're now kind of coming down a bit. This was the bounce day high. You have basically a, a, a kind of a double top that day. So anything above the 111.92, I think, is a buy stop for a retest of the old all-time high. Um, below this bounce low, though, the 102s, I think you could easily see a 50 MA test. Look at all this. Um, 50 MA support, right? It started here. You had a test here, a test here, a test here. This is the backside of the one of the consolidation channel, the kind of the weaker of the two, or the less steep of the two, you can see. Um, and then the bigger one is down here, closer to the 80s, like down near these lows. Um, I think somewhere in that range, uh, like a 50 MA touch to me the first time around, if this were to come down, would be a screaming buy for a right or right out play. Um, if you're short, it's a good cover area. So either like a buy stop up over these two-day highs for a move higher or a loss of the 10-day, like for a quick short down to the 20 MA of the, like the 100 area, I would cover some here and see. Remember the only short trade I discussed with NVIDIA was a short here actually below the 10-day for a move to the 20. It happened like the next day, so it was a quick cover point. Um, a lot of people were saying, oh, you have this great trade location, why cover? And they were surely sorry when this happened. So I'm going to assume the 20 MA is going to be a support until it doesn't. If you lose the 20, then I think we see the 50. And the 50, I think, is a screaming right or right out type of a, uh, a situation. Tesla, um, 200 MA, uh, very key. We had a gap above it, and we're now below it. Uh, basically with a 10-day here. So the same story here. I like Friday's range. Um, below the low, I think you probably could have a little continuation lower short, maybe to the 100 MA. You could see that this was some resistance. 
and anything above Friday's high, which would be again a this would be a look below and fail. Um, I think will be a move back higher. I think I know that they have a capital raise coming soon. Those tend to be like knee jerk downs that wind up being buys. I think it's going to be a little hard for them to sustain until you do get that capital raise. Nike, I actually am initiated in a short with a put spread. Uh, the loss of the earnings day range that was this this had been way up way higher on in after hours now we're below the 10 day we're below the 50 um there's a lot of talk about this being a dogs of the dow trade listen this could rip up the puts were real cheap i put this spread on for like a buck um i have to check and see what it is i'll update people it's somewhere on my stream i posted it but below the 50 ma to me seems weak i think we could maybe see the 49 again um Ideally, if I had my druthers, we would see the full 50% fib down in the 44, 45 area. Uh, we'll have to see if that happens or not. But uh, anything below 51, 55 to me remains a short. Back into that range is probably either a caution or you could even take half of the uh, playoff or just close it. JP Morgan seems like it has a date with Destiny to be at $100. That's the 1.618 Fibonacci extension of the entire range. Um, so what's the deal here? We have been holding the 10-day. It's basically holding the 20. You have two-day range here um, with, a, with a 20MA test. So below 85.04 is probably going to continue correcting. I would be all over this at a 50MA. Look at all these this support down at the 50MA. Um this was resistance. It became support. I, I think that, and it's also the the um, backside of like the the channel. Um, I think that this area would be a great buy area. I don't know that we're going to see it, but over the two day high is probably a long for a move to new highs. Uh, below the lows, I think could be a a move a little lower. We'll see. Goldman Sachs, Golden Slacks. Um, this has been a really, really epic move. Um, consolidation around the downtrend. Basically the same story. Um, below the 10-day, holding the 20. Anything below these two-day lows, I think could be a quick right or right out short. Um, keep in mind you have a, a range low. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, you could use 35, 37. Um, that to me is the must hold below there is a good right or right out short. Um, as long as these hold though, you get over these two day highs, I think you could probably buy stop at over 24107 for a move probably back to the highs and maybe even all time highs. Um, if you do a 1.618 Fibonacci extension, that would be 268.56. So there could be a little bit more room in the tank there. Same kind of situation with this Bank America has moved a heck of a lot. We snapped the trend here. We're below the 20 and the um, the 10 day. You have a, a breakdown bar and a doji in here. You could buy stop it up over if you want to try short over 2239. But anything below this 2177, I think we could be in store for a 50 MA test and that would basically just take you down to here. Not a big deal. Um, 50% fib though look at this comes in close to the um, breakout down in the 17s and that's also a volume distribution if this were to get down there and I'm not saying that it would but um, this to me would be a screaming buy area I would be all over that um, like a uh, like a cheap suit as they say right that's the uh, the ex expression and the best part would be um, if this were to somehow get a trend touch Wherever that may be, um, it would, to me, be a, a screaming buy. This was the reference high in the 18s. Maybe there is some kind of a larger break, um, and we get there. But right now, I'm only kind of targeting the 50 MA, and I think you could use Friday, um, Thursday's range, Thursday and Friday's range here as the gauge because this is the, the kind of the breakdown bar. So anything below that low, um, I think, continues. Anything above the, the high of it, I think, could rally higher. Morgan Stanley, kind of a similar situation. Um, the reference high here was the 41s. I think a 50 MA um, area could be a uh, could be a buy. Um, yeah. Caterpillar. This one I thought was going to 105 until until they came out with their 
their guidance. Um, and then I said that this day's range is big doji was the key. So anything above 97.39, I think could go to the 105. But anything I said below 94.05, I thought was a good rider right out short. Um, it's been stubborn, um, but it has been coming down. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it, it's this is the day's range that matters to me. Anything above 94.90 here, it would, me would be a, a, a pattern failure. So you could buy stop it up over 94.90 for a move higher. But anything below this low, this 92.82, um, I don't know how much further you're going to go. You have a, a 50 MA. Look where the breakout was. So the 50 MA has been some key levels. If you lose the 50, I think there's a quick move to the 100. So I like 50 MA right or right out. Um, I definitely would be looking to maybe cover a little bit there, but any break of the 50, I think, could see the 100, and then the 100 is also a key support level. So maybe a put ratio, buy 50s, sell two times out of the money 100, same week or next week. Seems logical to me. Gap stores, been very, very messy. This area is a very key area to hold. Anything below here, um, this... 22.32, I think could see the 21s, and I don't know, maybe this does even get down to like the 19.94, the $20 area. Um, this seems like a bit more of an extensive move. Um, you could see here it filled the gap, and it, it took a few days, so maybe it's one of these where it just is going to take a few days before a move up. But I do like the idea of starting to sell some out-of-the-money puts into that region. Kate Spade, they may be a buyout, a takeout room. Um, there's been some takeout rumors. The 200 is where it broke down. It's a little late, I think, to first buy it. I actually had a buy order in down here at the 50 MA for a pullback. We didn't even get it. We only got the 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 100 MA. Bit of a topping tail. So I think you could probably, if you want for a right or right out short, below the 1857 for a move maybe back. Um, and then if we were to get back above these highs, the 1945, it probably will just continue to drift. Del Fresco's, not one I talk about very often. This was also a private equity takeout rumor, speculative thing. Also, my favorite restaurant. Uh, any move back to trend um, down here in the 15s, you have a 50 MA around 1627. I'll probably use the 50 MA because look where this kind of broke out from. I'll be looking to sell out of the money puts probably like uh, somewhere in the 15 Strike 15.11 is the 61.8, so um, any move down into there, I'll be selling out of the money puts. And mo uh, we'll end on this mobile eye. Um, not one I like very often, um, but you had a potential professional gap here um, on some partnership news, and you have a doji. So um, let's keep it simple. I like it long above the doji high, which is 39.90 for a fill up the triangle to the 41s. And below the low, which is 37.57, um, I like short for a right or right out trade. I don't know where it'll take us, but um, the uh, if you do take this short, um, I would probably use the 38.53. This high of day is a stop. Um, this seems like the 50 MA here was the key, so I don't know how much pullback you might get, but I, I think that as long as this 50 MA holds, it's probably a long. This to me looks like the pattern is changing. And it does, to me, look like it wants to go higher. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Keep in mind the Fed Day range. In ES terms, the Fed Day low is 2243. Below there remains vulnerable. Back above is a look below and fail. I'd be targeting the VWAP, which is 2259 quarter. Um, if that can breach, um, then we would see the 2272 half, which is the Fed Day high. But anything below 2243, to me, is vulnerable. Back above is neutral to more bullish. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope you guys and gals enjoyed my weekend review video. Let's have a great start to the new year and cheers.